You've probably heard that first impressions are everything, but have you considered where your first impressions are happening? They're not just in person anymore. Welcome to the Savvy Agent Podcast, where we help real estate agents build a thriving business so they have financial freedom in their life without having to work 24 seven. I'm your host, Heather Wright. Now let's get to it. When you're going to a listing appointment, do you take care to make sure it's a good first impression? Maybe you wear your business best or at least business casual. You're probably not wearing your sweaty gym clothes. You've got your questions planned, maybe even done a little role playing. So you're prepared for any situation. And then you've probably got some cool marketing collateral, like your listing presentation, maybe some nicely designed flyers or guides for the sellers. Of course, we put our best foot forward on a listing appointment. We want the seller to see us as the go-to agent, the best choice to help them. The go-to agent is professional and prepared and always makes a great first impression. But what if that first time you meet wasn't your first impression? Is it possible that seller did a little research on you before they set the listing appointment? Maybe they got your name as a referral from someone you worked with before. So they've heard how great you are through the eyes of a different client. They might have looked at your website. Do sellers or buyers really care if you have a website? Probably not that much. They don't necessarily know what it does for them or really how you use it, but they might raise their eyebrows if they can't find your real estate business anywhere. Personally, I have two websites. One is a website in a box. I use an old legacy version of conversion. Boomtown, Commissions Inc., Real Geeks, those are other examples of websites in a box. They're usually a little bit more expensive, but they're also able to handle lead generation for you. Then I have a WordPress website, which doesn't have any IDX on it. The links that say search for homes will take you to my conversion site. I don't really love either website, so I'm not recommending either one as a solution for you. I'm just sharing what I currently use. We primarily use conversion for our IDX. It's a better design, in my opinion, than Matrix, which is our MLS. Conversion also has forced registration for lead generation, squeeze pages, dynamic links that I can use over and over. It has a lot of features that are useful to us, but they also give us a professional and prepared first impression. My WordPress site is used for the about us for my team. That area is a little lacking in the conversion website. Plus every year I think this is the year I'm going to cancel conversion and somehow I never do, but that's a story for another day. We also have several blog posts on our WordPress page that we use for nurturing leads or educating clients. Anytime I do a video for YouTube, I add it to our blog. Then when I share the video on our newsletter, the end user is directed to my website, not YouTube. And I think that's just a little bit more polished. Our WordPress site also has landing pages for lead magnets. So I can give a link to download our ultimate guide to selling your house for free. The guide is free, not selling your house. That's not free. On the landing page, it's basically just a registration page. Give me your email and tell me where to send the guide. So when it comes to first impressions on either of our websites, I think those definitely give a professional and prepared impression. Even if you don't have your own website yet, your broker probably has something that will give you an online presence. I know Remax has agent sites. They're not super functional, but at least it gives you the opportunity to make a good first impression. If your future clients are looking for an agent and they're doing a little online recon, they're probably going to be reading reviews. We collect reviews on Zillow, which was a habit I started in 2010. Now, if I was starting over today, I would probably collect reviews on Google, or I'd be more clever and get video reviews that I could host on my own website. Although just saying that sentence out loud makes me cringe on how much work that actually is. So maybe I wouldn't do that. Regardless, you should think about where people will read reviews and partner with that platform to collect them. Yelp isn't really popular in my area, but that's another place that consumers might look. They trust Yelp, just like they trust Zillow, and they also trust Google. And video testimonials, even though that sounds like an awful lot of work to do, they're hard to fake, so they're automatically trustworthy. But then what are people saying in the reviews? That's going to matter on your first impression as well. If they say you get the job done, but it's hell getting you to answer the phone, that's not really a good review. 
Sometimes there are bad reviews. We all get them. I think the most important part of a bad review is how you respond. You can make yourself look really bad if you respond with venom. You know, the people who respond with their emotions in the moment, and they kind of attack the person that left the bad review. But you can also make yourself look really good, especially in a bad situation, When you respond without that emotion and you respond from a professional place or you have some empathy, I don't have a specific example of a bad review and having a good response, but I'm sure you're familiar. I'm sure you have seen the bad reviews with the bad responses and then bad reviews with the good responses. Okay. So let's say the seller got a glowing reference from their coworker about you. They were a past client of yours and told this person to call you. It was a referral. Then they looked at your website and they liked what they saw. They were able to find a few other reviews on you. So they're starting to get an idea of what to expect working with you, but then they're going to look you up on Facebook. What are they going to find there? Will they find party girl pics? Being the life of the party is one thing, but when someone scrolls your social feed and starts to wonder if you have a drinking problem, that's not a really good impression. Or will they find hot girl photos? You know, the ones with pouty duck faces and a lot of cleavage. Ew, keep those to a minimum, ladies. There's more to you than your duck lips and boobs. Will they find drama mama posts, the kind of posts that air all of your dirty laundry? And if you're disguising your drama in vague posts... Well, it's still a hundred percent drama, mama. Will they find nothing? Your profile is locked down and there hasn't been a post on your business page since 2018. None of these are very good impressions, but what if you could project an image of being professional and prepared? And that doesn't mean putting your blazer on for every photo, my God, but maybe watch what you do put on social media. You don't need all the party photos. Party girl doesn't look like she'd be super serious about work when all she does is party. Do you really want to project the image the duck lips and cleavage portrays? As a married woman, that might make me think that you're not going to be the right person to help my husband and I find our new home. Keep the drama at a minimum. If not, remove it completely. You want people to see you as a problem solver, not a problem haver. And also, why not start posting regularly on your business page? It's important that people get to know, like, and trust you. And it's totally okay to be you. There's a lot more to you than the party girl, the hot girl, the drama mama posts. Don't be afraid to share the real you. And if the real you also happens to give a more positive first impression, then that's a win. Where else are people potentially getting a first impression from you? Are you out for drinks with people, a friend and their friend, for example, and find yourself complaining about work, complaining about the most irritating client you've been working with that wants to look at so many houses. Oh my God, why won't he just pick one? The people you're with might be wondering what you would say about them if they were your client. So maybe watch where you vent. I mean, I totally get it, but that's why having buddies who are in real estate is going to be really helpful to, you know, have that venting sounding board because we all get it. But if you're not in the business, you don't get it. How about your kids' sports events? How are you showing up there? Are you the most aggressive, belligerent fan in the crowd? I'm not a parent, so I can't really speak to this situation, but I do wonder if that parent is maybe not giving the best impression. My point is there are eyes and ears everywhere in our world today. Oh, and that just made me think about cameras in houses. Speaking of eyes and ears in our world, someone might be getting their first impression from the ring doorbell. While this isn't necessarily going to be a future client, I mean, I suppose it could be, but regardless, it's definitely a first impression. Just watch yourself so that you're not ripping apart someone's home and getting a bad rep without even knowing you were doing it on camera. So consider where people might get their first impressions of you and make sure you're setting yourself up for success whenever possible. If drunk duck lips is your brand and you get a lot of business from that, good for you. But if you're not getting the business you want, perhaps do a first impression audit and see if there's anywhere you might have opportunity to make an adjustment. We talked about content a little bit throughout this episode, and if you'd like to create content to give you a professional and prepared first impression, not to mention help nurture and educate your clients, then you should check out the Visible Agent Inspiration Bank, where we have over 500 content prompts that will inspire all of your content. You can use it for social media posts, video content, blogs, newsletters, and then recycle all of that to other platforms. Get your copy at SavvyAgent.co slash V-A-I-B today. And yes, I will put that link in the show notes. 
Thanks so much for listening. We'll talk to you next week.